Hi YouTube family, it's Daughter of the Most High. Today is my birthday, so happy birthday to me. I am 61. I've been 61 for two hours, so it's two in the morning. Um, I don't know what time I was born. I maybe should know that, but I don't. Um, but I was born on January 13th. So um, anyway, I have had a couple of interesting things lately, so I am going to share those with you. So uh, it was last week, and I know it sounds so bizarre, but the Lord will speak to me through license plates. And this actually is not new. This has gone on in my life for over a decade, at least. So anyway, um, I was driving to work and this license plate caught my eye. And our license plates in Minnesota have, for the most part, three letters and then um, three numbers. And so um, the three letters were N, C, and a Y. Okay? <laughs> and the number was 160. So I look at this plate and I said, God, are you trying to tell me to look up 160? I mean, N, C, Y is like my name, you know? So... I looked up 160 in the Strong's Concordance online, and it says, um, I don't know how to say the word, but it, uh, it's here. I'm just going to click pronounce. Strong's G 160. Hyphnidius. 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 Okay, so we got that. So it says... That word from a compound compound of G1 as a negative particle, and then compare it to another word, um, meaning non-apparent, unexpected, suddenly, sudden, and unaware. So what stood out uh, to me was the suddenly. Because remember, God gave me the two suddenlies when I was driving my my little car, my little Kia, and I got those two dreams. Um, one where suddenly uh, the windshield was covered in snow and I was on the T in the road and there was cross traffic at the end of the T. And I thought, suddenly I lost visibility. And the other one was the fog. And our, you know, we, it's been pretty cold this winter, at least probably a couple weeks of the winter has been pretty cold here. And so our windows fog up. I mean, when we have heat on the inside of our car and it's minus whatever, minus, you know, one, two, ten outside, our windows get fogged up. Well, that was the dream is that my windshield went, started to fog up from the bottom. And this will happen and we'll put on our defrost. We'll switch our heat from like our feet and like we have the feet and whatever. And then it can move to the windshield to defrost it. So, but this started at the bottom and then just woof, in like four seconds. And that never happens in real life. And, but it did happen in the dream. So yeah, that was another suddenly and suddenly I lost visibility again. Well, then I saw NCY 160 and I look it up and what, I'm not unaware. I'm not really unexpected. I mean, we know the times we live in, but the suddenly factor is what's standing out to me there. So it's in scripture in two different places, um, this particular word, and it's in Luke 21, 34. Um, and that verse says, take heed to yourself, selves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with I don't even know that word, Surf, surfeiting, S-U-R-F-E-I-T-I-N-G, and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day, so that day come upon you unawares. And the unawares is the uh, Greek 160. And the second one is, and again, I don't drink, so that's not me. Um, and the cares of this life, no. Uh, cares about the times, yeah. So, and the second one is for, or yeah, First Thessalonians uh, 5, verse 3. For when they, 
for when they shall say peace and safety, we know this one, then suddenly, which is, it's got the G160, destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So um, the second one seems to apply much more than the first one. And we know that um, with the Abraham Accord, they were saying peace and safety and that kind of thing. That court, that was that coin that came out uh, while Trump was president. And so, yeah, and maybe there, you know, that'll happen again once the Antichrist emerges because he is going to promise that uh, to restore peace. So, but we got to go through some chaos first before that. So I thought that was interesting. And again, I always pray about it because I get these bits and pieces and it's like, okay, God, um, that's three times suddenly now. And, um, with a big gap between the first two and then the most recent. Okay. So, and then I just wait to hear more and I just watch and pay attention. I love hearing from the Lord and I love supernatural things. And so I love when the Lord works in my life in that way. So the other day, two nights ago, um, this was my other incident. Um, <clears throat> well, three nights ago now with, it's the 13th. And um, I was sleeping and my fan went off. And I have had this fan for quite a while. And so my room went completely quiet because I am so, if I can say, addicted to the sound of the fan when I sleep. I mean, I am so, that's so me. I can't sleep in a uh, completely silent room. I've had white noise and fans forever. I mean, decades. So the fan went off and my room was completely silent. And so I woke up and I thought, oh, the fan. I thought it just, you know how the things will just shut down and when they're old and whatever. And so I thought, oh, my fan. And I just went back to sleep. And when I went back to sleep, I had a strange dream. And... In my dream, and I'm going to tell you, I never remember my dreams, like almost ever, unless they're God dreams. Some people dream all the time. I almost like, well, they say you dream, but you don't remember it. So I guess whatever the case, I almost never, I mean, ever, ever, ever have a dream that I can recall, unless it's a God dream. So... Um, I woke up just for, you know, a few seconds when my fan went off, but I was uh, tired enough that I was able to get right back to sleep, which is good for me because that doesn't always happen. And in my, I went into this dream and in the dream, I was in bed like I was in real life. And suddenly there was a woman in my room and she looked disheveled, you know, not very put together. And um, I said to her, because my dogs are always upstairs, my little dog is always on the bed with me, and, and our bigger dog will a lot of times be on the floor because he tends to get hotter and he loves to lay in front of the fan. So I said, and I'm thinking, how did you get in here um, without my dogs barking? But I didn't say that part. I just said, how did you get in here? And she said some kind of vague response of like, almost like I have my ways or something like that. And so I said, um, I said, how do you know me? And she said, you are known. And then the dream was over. So when I said, how do you know me? My thinking in the dream. Now, I, of course, I'm puzzled. In the dream, I'm puzzled, you know, How'd you get in here without my dogs barking? But I didn't realize in my dream that she was from the spirit realm. So, of course, she went through walls. And then when I said, how do you know me? What I'm thinking is that I've always worked in human services and I've worked in treatment for 15, over 15 years now. And so I thought she was looking for some kind of help. And so that's why I, my question was like, how did you know to come to me for help? Like, how did you find out or discover, you know, that I work in those ways or, you know, um, how did you, how do you know me? And she said, you are known. And that was the end of the dream. 
So when I woke up, um, and I always wake up, I mean, that's just me. I go to bed late, I get up late, and I have to quick get ready for work. And so I'm getting ready for work, and I'm thinking back to that dream, and it's like, okay, that was strange. And for her to say, um, you, you are known, that's not me in my in the natural life. That is me in the spirit realm. She's talking about the spirit realm. And so I've been thinking about that and pondering that for a couple of days now. And I think what she's saying is that, first of all, it's a suddenly. Suddenly she's in my room. And suddenly she's saying, you know, you are known. And what that tells me is that a big part of the end times, I mean, like the majority of their um, agenda and goal is to eliminate anything Christian. And those of us that are committed Christians and sharing with others and on the narrow path and are threat to the enemy's, his kingdom, his plan, we're marked. We're marked anyway, but we are marked. We are in the end times and they want to do away with us. So that's how I took it. And so, and again, I know that, but I had this dream. It was given to me. It was a God dream. It was an unusual dream. I want to share one more thing about that dream and then I want to share something else. Um, so when I got up, I always like crawled at the coffee pot. Maybe you do too. I always do. Not literally, but you know, my, that's my first place <laughs> that I ever go. And, um, and so, um, I was starting to get ready and I wake, I always wake up kind of foggy. I just do. I'm a backwards person. I don't wake up, you know, feet hit the floor. That's not me. And it never is. and never was. So, um, after I'd been up for a while, I thought, Oh, I got to check on the fan. And so I checked on the fan and sure enough, it was unplugged. My fan was unplugged by a demon from the spirit realm. I plugged it back in and it worked just fine. Isn't that like, ah, oh, it's like, okay, you dirty dog, you know, but yeah. So however they do that, I don't know if they have a hand and they pull it out of the outlet or if they just have to thank it or I don't know how it works in the spirit realm but yep they unplug my some little monster uh unplug my fan so at least my fan works right I don't have to go out and buy a new fan the other thing that um recently happened too is that um I a couple um videos I did a video on Glenda which I I love Glenda's teaching on unforgiveness and the one prior to that I think was um, about, um, Vicki, Vicki Adkins and just what a blessing her channel is and what a, a blessing I felt led to, I was led to Vicki's channel. Well, then, uh, I watched her testimony video and she had done that a couple of years ago. And let me tell you, the girl has quite a testimony, but that is not my point. Um, so while I'm listening to her testimony, she's talking about, she grew up in a, in a tough, kind of tough way. And, um, and then she was very rebellious, which if you looked at her channel, it's hard to even picture her like that. She's like so angelic now and so like calm and peaceful. And, um, so she shares in, in the video that she got married and then divorced and then remarried to her first husband, and then divorced, and then some years later got married again, and then was divorced. And so her current husband, Chuck, that she has the channel with, I believe is her fourth marriage, third husband. So, um, and she is just like, she has overcome so much. And her channel is a blessing, but she's in an adulterous remarriage. So I think, so I wrote her a letter and um, I don't know if she's gotten it, yet, uh, gotten it yet because it's to a P.O. box. And a lot of times people go to their P.O. box like once a week or once every other week. It's not their home mail or whatever. 
So I just said to her, I said, you know, I just listened to your testimony and I just shared, you know, wow, you know, that was huge. She was into drugs and all kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah, maybe I'll share it on my channel sometime. But yeah, she went through a lot. And so, um, and then um, I said, you mentioned that you've been married several times and I want to share with you what the Lord brought to me in the last three and a half years. So I shared that and you guys know my story there. And I said, you know, if if your first husband and his first marriage was you to you, and they were young, they were quite young, I think 18 or 19, um, and she's in her upper 60s now. Um, my dog is right here. Um, I said, that that man is your covenant spouse. And I told her that I don't, you know, date or anything um, because I have a covenant spouse. So... I just shared that um, if he is still alive or if you married while he's alive, you know, remarried um, for a third time or fourth time or whatever it was, um, that, you know, he is your covenant spouse. Now, if he has since passed and you got remarried, you're okay. You're in good standing. It's not technically remarried. I mean, in our language it is, but in God's it's married. So we're married like, with uh, in with our to our covenant spouse and when he passes we're, we're married again there's no remarriage in the bible you know so and that death is the only thing that uh, breaks the covenant not cheating and not abandonment and not even abuse which is kind of hard to understand but it's only death breaks the covenant and so I explained that all to her and I said, you know, I just wanted you to know this because our churches don't teach it. And I don't, she's in her upper 60s and we know that our world's changing and there's, I mean, on MSN, on the news, there are deaths and, you know, shootings and everything every single day. Every day there's this death, that death, that we are in such a time of such darkness and none of us are guaranteed, you know. Now, God does protect us, but we've seen some people, um, Christian people, die in their 60s in the last years, even from COVID in the, in the last year. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted her to know about that. So I had just sent that letter last weekend, and then today it's, it's the start of Thursday. So uh, she may not have and even got it yet. She may have not even gotten it yet, but I did tell her that, and I know that the spirit realm, you know, like a day or two later, I have this dream, and it's because I share God's truth, and I have a boldness about me that I wasn't bold at all in the letter. I was very calm and quiet, and I was just like, I, I want you to know this, um, and because so many people don't know it. Now, even the ones that do know it, most of them ignore it. And she may too, you know. People just assume, I'm not making this change. God wouldn't do that. You know what? God does that. If you're in unrepentant sin, you won't see heaven. If you don't forgive my other video, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. You can go to hell on one point or one miss. And this is something that we absolutely have to get. My little bug is right here. Just won't leave me alone while I'm talking to you. Look at, look at, look at my baby. Yeah, you're my baby. You're my baby. He looks so big when we're on the, everything's so different on the camera. Anyway, and he's about 19 pounds. He's my baby. And um, so I just wanted to share that, you know, chain of events and just that, you know, Apparently, it, you know, made somebody mad in uh, the enemy's camp. And so they're unplugging my fan and saying weird things and letting me know that uh, I'm a target. Well, I plead the shed blood of Jesus over myself every day and over my kids and my home and my job and my dogs and my everything. So that's where it's at. I just wanted to share that with you, family. Um, let me see if I can get my bug over here. Come here, my baby. Come here, my baby. He's a Westie, but he's got floppy ears. So if he goes like this, right there, my baby. Oh, <laughs> such a wiggle butt. 